Our second speaker is Carlos Ron, and he is the Vice Minister for North America in the Ministry of People's Power for Foreign Relations in Venezuela. And he is also there, the president of the Simon Bolivar Institute for Peace and Solidarity Among Peoples. Carlos was born in Venezuela, and there he has been raised and educated also in Brazil. As a diplomat, he, was, he has represented uh, Venezuela in the United States as well as in Brazil. He was an advisor to the Office of, the Pre uh, of Presidential International Relations, coordinator of the research program on regional integration and multilateral agreements at the Miranda International Center. Um, uh, Carlos has uh, studied at, uh, in the United States and in Brazil. So Carlos, we are very honored to have you and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Radhika. And it's a pleasure uh, to be here. And it's always a pleasure, of course, to, to be somewhere where we can speak out and defend our brothers and sisters of uh, Cuba and the Cuban revolution. Um, you know, it is interesting that you, uh, well, when we gathered under this uh, for this event, we were talking about um, uh, U.S. aggression being a danger for uh, world peace, and I, I, I would say, you know, it, it, it really the aggression against Cuba is part of a hybrid war that is ongoing already, um, and then we have to, even though you know there's no troops being deployed in Cuba and there's no bombs falling uh, from U.S. planes, well, we, we have a very uh, a situation that, that is exactly the same as a war and exactly the same uh, with the same capacity of, of creating uh, pain and it's aimed at creating pain and it's aimed specifically at creating a change of government in Cuba, as well as other countries that are undergoing the same type of blockade as we are here in Venezuela and as uh, other countries, about 30% of the world is under some sort of illegal, unilateral coercive measure by the United States. This puts into question our, our whole international system, where, as we know, only the only, the only actions that we can call sanctions can be issued by the, U the United Nations Security Council, yet the United States feels that they have the right and that they have uh, uh, the duty to uh, place these actions or these uh, measures on uh, free uh, countries and free peoples, punishing whole populations uh, with uh, the effect of, of their measures. Uh, so we have to keep this in mind. We have to keep in mind uh, that the aggression of the United States against Cuba in recent weeks, as Iroel very well uh, described, uh, you know, uh, has been, if we, 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 we could put a number to it, you know, in the last 16 weeks, there has been, there have been over 52 U.S. sanctions implemented against Cuba alone. So this is the, this is the barbarity and this is the, the mass, the, the, you know, the, how massive this attack and this war is, uh, is, is actually uh, um, going on against Cuba. Look, I live in a city that and, 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 and with this, I want to say what Cuba means to, to me, and I know that it means the same to many Venezuelans. I live in a city that 20 years ago, around 20 years ago, began to change. I could walk across from, 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 from my street and, and begin to distin distinctly hear uh, the Cuban accent next to the uh, National Institute of Sports when we began the, the, the cooperation. I could walk further up the hill into one of the poorest neighborhoods here in, in Caracas. And I could also start hearing a Cuban accent for the first time at the post that President Chavez set up. So for the first time in the lives of many of the people that live here, they had access to, uh, to a doctor. They had, uh, they had a, a, a doctor nearby. Back then, a lot of people uh, who started questioning this, uh, this relationship between Venezuela and Cuba began saying, why, isn't, why aren't Venezuelan doctors occupying this post? Why aren't they uh, the ones to take care of the people? And the reality was that there was a call by the government to, for Venezuelan doctors to go and to go into, into the inner city places and to go into the rural, remote rural areas of Venezuela. And they wouldn't go because they said things like, you know, those, those, these places are very dangerous. These places are not safe. Uh, we're not going to get paid enough money to do this. I don't want to risk my life for so little money and so forth. And the Cuban doctors militantly and, and with commitment came 
and gave these people, you know, the, the, the first, the first you know, medical attention they had in years, sometimes in generations, uh, because there, there, there have been generations that haven't had this access. You know, the irony of this is that those, uh, that those Cuban doctors that, that, that you know, that, that, that came to live in these uh, uh, poor areas of the city became the most respected, the most protected people in the area because of the gratitude of the people uh, when uh, the solidarity of the Cuban doctors who, who didn't think twice about uh, staying in that part of the city, living with, with, uh, with the population under the conditions that the population was living in those, in those, uh, in those parts of the, in the cities. By the way, I saw this in Brazil as well with, with the program uh, Mais Medicos that was implemented under uh, uh, um, uh, the Workers' Party that uh, the right wing supported by the, by the U.S. eventually overthrew. Um, you know, it is, I, I, and, and I'll tell you even more, this unmistakable Cuban accent that we started listening to here, we also heard it in other parts of the country with people that started to read and write for the first time in their lives, thanks to the Cuban brigades that came over and helped uh, uh, um, erase uh, uh, um, literacy from Venezuela by, by alphabetizing over a million people. This, my friends, is not something that you read in a book. Because it's not something you hear in a speech. It's not some report. This is something that we have witnessed here in Venezuela for over 20 years. This is what Cuba means to us. It means humanity. It means solidarity. It is a people whose history is inextricably linked to our own. Cuba was the last mission, the last unfulfilled mission in Bolivar's agenda of liberation for this continent. There's a beautiful flag that I invite you to to look for created by Bolivarians of a golden sun on a blue background and, and, a, and, a, and a red uh, outline that was supposed to be the flag of Cuban independence in 1823. And those had those efforts been successful. Cuba has been on the list of priorities for Latin American emancipation ever since 1826. And we finally came to see in an emancipated and free and strong Cuba with the Cuban revolution uh, with Fidel Castro he, two weeks after uh, coming to Havana, he came here to Caracas. Uh, and you could read Pablo Neruda's account on, on, on watching uh, Fidel's speech for you know, over 200,000 people here in Caracas and how he said that you know, he had heard something different from a politician, you know, some, some, uh, something that, there, that was lively within uh, the people of Caracas because it, 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 it was to him the opening of a new era for Latin America. That stayed in, the, in generations in the memories of the Venezuelans who have fought very hard during our so-called democracy uh, uh, at that time until it became a real democracy in the Bolivarian revolution. And, and now we can, we can share the same message that, that, that Fidel gave of solidarity, of coherence, and of dignified living for the majorities of population. What we share with Cuba today is that same horizon of, of social justice. We walk together in a valley of sabotage and aggression and blockades and unilateral measures, all, aid, all aimed at destroying viable socialist experiences as close as 90 miles from the shores of the place that would have you believe that you have reached Dante's neoliberal inferno and, there's, and that we almost abandon hope in, and for a different society. We're not abandoning hope. We are not abandoning Cuba. Cuba to me and, 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 and to most of Venezuelans, it's not only the victorious entry of, of the revolutionaries in Havana, but it's the remarkable achievements of its people, despite all the aggressions that they undergo. Uh, you know, the, like, like uh, Errol said, you know, you have a country who has a, by now, five vaccine candidates of its own, despite all the aggression, despite all the limitations that, that it has, yet it doesn't have uh, enough uh, syringes to, uh, to uh, put them on, on, on its own people because of, of, of these uh, uh, attacks that the United States is placing on them. So Cuba is that, Cuba is that resistance, that love, that commitment to a socialist future, which is present in the consciousness of those youth who today will come out with their head high and proud and, to, and, and we'll say to you, we are Fidel, or we'll say to you, Patria Muerte Venceremos. So this is the Cuba that we defend. This is the Cuba that we stand 
firmly next to, and we must all do our efforts to denounce this uh, illegal and arbitrary aggression of the United States against all countries that it is trying to uh, destroy and overthrow because we are building a socialist horizon that they are afraid of. Thank you very much.